Okay, let's do another example of proving a limit with the epsilon delta definition, but without the delta is equal to minimum one and all that, so without the one trick. So we are going to prove that the limit as x approaching two of one over x is equal to one over two. I did do a proof on this already based on the usual trick, but here is how you do it, which is going to be much more confusing what tell you that. Anyways, P, F to begin with the proof. Here we go. Step one, given epsilon greater than zero. Step two, choose delta. We don't know what it is yet, so I'll leave it. Step three, suppose, since we're talking about x is approaching two, so we want the absolute value of x minus two is in between of zero and delta. And then we are going to check the absolute value of the function and the limit. So one over x minus one over two. And hopefully later on, we can see that it is indeed less than delta. First, let's do some algebra. So get the common denominator and all that. The common denominator is 2x, 2 here, and then minus x. And then I'm going to switch the order of the subtraction, just negate the result like so. Now, the limit of the absolute, the absolute value of a quotient, it's a quotient of the absolute values, so I'm going to apply the absolute value here. And then absolute value of the bottom. But the absolute value of a product, it's the product of the absolute value. So I'm going to do the absolute value of this and that. Absolute value of 2 is just 2. And then absolute value of x. Negative times something in the absolute value of the negative doesn't matter. So this is equal to absolute value of x minus 2 over 2 absolute value of x. So far, so good. They are just algebra. Now, the first thing that we can do is we have the absolute value of x minus 2 already, which we know is less than delta. So we can see that is less than delta on the top. That's totally legit. 2 is still 2 on the bottom. That's still legit. But now, what do we do with the absolute value of x on the bottom? Well, let's do the things that we did earlier, like the previous example. Remember, we want to utilize this, right? Because that's the thing that we have. So maybe let's try this. I start with the absolute value of x. Rewrite it on purpose as x minus 2 plus 2 inside. So that we can use the triangle inequality. This is the first part. That's the second part. So that is less than or equal to absolute value of the first part plus the absolute value of the second part. This is pretty nice because now we have this which we know is less than delta. So we can see absolute value of x is less than delta plus 2. Well, here's the problem. This absolute value of x is on the bottom. Right now, this is not on the bottom yet. If we do the reciprocal, OK, 1 over absolute value of x. This is 1 over delta plus 2. Suppose this is positive for now. I don't know what it is yet. But let's assume that this is positive. If you take the reciprocal on both sides, unfortunately, you have to flip the inequality. That's not going to agree with what we want right here, right? Because 1 over absolute value of x is greater than this thing. So I cannot just put delta plus 2 on the bottom here. Oh, so what do we do, right? Well, erase the board, of course, and do it again. The key is, in fact, we have two versions for the triangle inequality. So I'm going to write them down right here. The first version is the one that we used earlier. Absolute value of A plus B is less than or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. We also have the minus version, and that's also called the reverse triangle inequality. Absolute value of A minus absolute value of B is less than or equal to absolute value of A minus B. And this is hard to remember. Just plug in some a and b, like say 5 and negative 2, and you can verify if it works or not. However, when we have the absolute value inequalities like this, we usually have another absolute value around here. Right? This is still true, even though without the absolute value, that's true. But this is the version that you usually see. All right? But anyways, this is the one that it's actually going to help us check this out. Again, we have absolute value of x minus 2. So x 
and two are the key. And we are going to utilize that. This and that together, you'll see, applying this, we get absolute value of absolute value of x minus absolute value of 2 in the absolute value. That will be less than or equal to absolute value of x minus 2, where a is the x and b is the 2. You know? Yeah, so reverse triangle inequality. Now, what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to take out this absolute value to do so. This will just be in the middle. It's going to be in between of this and the negative version of that. So this is absolute value of x minus 2. It will be in between of negative absolute value of x minus 2 and positive absolute value of x minus 2. In fact, what we saw earlier, it's this part right here. If you replace this with delta and so on, yeah, it's not going to be helpful. The key is we are going to be utilizing this side of the inequality. So I'm going to write this down first. This tells us absolute value of x minus 2 is going to be greater than or equal to that negative absolute value of x minus 2. Continue, put the 2 to the other side. Now, this is the part that we can replace with delta, and we have to do it carefully because we have the negative and all that. So I'm just going to work that out the details for you guys. We know absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta, so if I multiply both sides by a negative, I will flip the inequality so it becomes like this. So if you look at this part, which is that, and I can maintain the opening the same direction. So all in all, this shows absolute value of x. I can change that to a strict inequality. So it's greater than, and we have a 2. This whole thing is going to be replaced with this whole thing, which is minus delta. Now, this is actually what we want, because now I will just take the reciprocal on both sides. We get 1 over absolute value of x, and that will be 1 over 2 minus delta. Do I reverse the inequality? Well, here is the key I will have to tell you. This. Well, actually, do you, do you guys see the problem here? There's a problem. I cannot do this yet, but I can do this for now because I don't know what delta is yet. Later on, when I put on what delta is, this is, becomes the gentleman, okay? Check this out. The problem that we cannot go from here to here is because I don't know if this is negative or not. If delta happens to be 3, then we are talking about 3 minus, sorry, 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. And when we do the reciprocal, then this is no longer true because this is positive, this is negative. That's not true. So I will have to tell you this right here. Later on, we will see that 2 minus delta, this, in fact, will be positive. So you don't have to worry about it, all right? But for now, I'm just going to put this down right here. The inequality works. You see, we have the absolute value of x on the bottom. Less than, which is already here, and I can just put this nicely on the bottom as well. So cool, huh? What's next? Well, remember, at the end of the day, we want to see this becomes just a epsilon. So I just have to set this expression equal epsilon, and then solve for what delta is, and then we go from there. Here we go. So we have delta over 2 times 2 minus delta is equal to epsilon, and this is just like scratch paper work. I'm going to multiply this to both sides. So 2 epsilon times 2 minus delta and distribute. So that will be 4 epsilon minus 2 delta epsilon. Put this to the other side and then factor out the delta. We have a 1 plus 2 epsilon times delta. That's equal to 4 epsilon. Divide this to both sides. Okay, so 
This is the delta that we are going to use. I'm going to put it down right here. 4 epsilon over 1 plus 2 epsilon. Now, I'm going to provide the notes, the information that we needed earlier. So right here, note. Firstly, 4 epsilon over two, 1 plus 2 epsilon. Because epsilon is greater than 0, so we know this thing right here has to be positive. No problem on that. Secondly, depends on how you want to do it. You can do long division and all that. It's going to be 2 plus of something or 2 minus something. I, yeah, anyways, it's going to be 2 minus something actually. Like, yeah, but you can see that this is going to be less than 2. You can take the limit as epsilon approaching infinity. The limit is 2 and this is increasing to 2. And yeah, so this right here guarantees that this part here is non-zero and it's non-negative. So this right here is legit. So perhaps I'll just indicate that right here. I will tell you 1 over absolute 5 of x is indeed less than 1 over 2 minus epsilon because we have this right here, which is delta, because delta is in between of 0 and 2. Okay, so that works. Okay, now all I have to do is put this into the deltas and then work them out. Here we go. This is equal to that delta is 4 epsilon over 1 plus 2 epsilon over 2 times 2 minus delta, which is 4 epsilon over 1 plus 2 epsilon. Now, we just have to simplify it. I'm just going to multiply 1 plus 2 epsilon on the top and also on the bottom. And we can see this and that cancel and then distribute this real quick. On the bottom, you can see 2 on the outside. 2 times this is 2. 2 times that is 4 epsilon. This times that they cancel. So it's a minus 4 epsilon. And this and that cancel. So you will see that this right here is a 4 epsilon on the top. On the bottom, it's just a regular 2 times 2, which is 4. And ladies and gentlemen, here's the best part. The 4 cancels out. And we just end up with epsilon. So have a look. The absolute value of 1 over x minus 1 over 2 is less than epsilon. So that means we are done.